Hey, welcome back to the next lesson of our tutorial series on how to make Among Us multiplayer. In this lesson, we're going to be going over how to instantiate our player avatar across the network. Now, before we begin, today is November 3rd, 2020, which means it's election day in the United States. But I don't want to talk about anything controversial. I just want to share my funny political game that I've created, Presidential Slap. Look at this game. It's absolutely hilarious. You get to pick whichever candidate you disagree with the most, whether it's Trump or Biden, and then you get to slap them around a bit. I've actually heard it's quite therapeutic from the people I've already shared it with. And so tonight, if you're stressing out about the outcome of the election, just play Presidential Slap for a couple minutes and you'll feel all your worries just melt away. Nah, I'm just kidding. But seriously, if you want to show your support for me and these videos that I'm creating, then one way to do that is to download either Presidential Slap or some of the other games that we've created and share them with your friends. You can download Presidential Slap for free on both Google Play and the Apple App Store. I've left links to those in the description below. Now let's get on with the lesson. Now before we get started, there's one thing that I'd like to show you and that is how to manually set the room size for your multiplayer matches. This is done within our quick start scene. If you expand the Photon Quick Start Prefab and select the Quick Start Lobby Controller, you can then set the room size right here. Now a normal Among Us game is up to 10 players, but for testing purposes, we'll leave our room size at two. Now to get started with setting up our player and avatar objects so that they're synchronized across the network, we'll go back to our game scene. Inside our game scene, you'll wanna go ahead and remove all of the player objects from our scene. We then want to move our AU player prefab from our regular prefabs folder to the new photon prefabs folder that's in the resources folder. Now this part can be where things get a bit confusing. And that is because normally when we're developing a single player game and we're referring to the object that our player is controlling, a lot of times we call that the player object. When in reality, it's actually the player's avatar or character object. And when we're developing in multiplayer, the player object or user object is an instance that represents the player's presence in the game. And we need this type of object so that if we ever destroy our avatar object, we can still have a presence in our game. So you'll notice that within our photon prefabs folder, we now have two prefabs. One is our AU player, which we just moved into this folder. And the other is our photon player. This prefab came with our quick start package. And this is the object that will represent our player's presence in the game. Whereas our AU player, is now what we'll refer to as our avatar or character that we control. Now the next thing that we're going to do is modify our photon player object. And so go ahead and open up this prefab and select the capsule object which is the child to this prefab. Now if you want to you can either destroy this object or you can just disable the mesh render and capsule collider components. We then need to go back to the parent object and we need to add this new script which is called my photon player. For this script, I've added a subfolder to our scripts folder called MyPhoton, and we want to add a new C# -sharp script and call it something like MyPhotonPlayer. After which, we can open it up in our coding environment. Now, we want to use this script for instantiating our avatar object across the network, and so we first need to add the using photon.pun namespace and the using system.io namespace. We then need to create two variables. The first is of type photon view. I've called this my PV. It's my go-to name for photon views. We then need a game object variable called my player avatar. We then want to go down to the start function and we need to initialize our photon view variable. So I have my PV equals git component and we're looking for a photon view. And for the next section of code, we're going to instantiate our player avatar object but we only want to do this if we are the owner of this current game object. And so I have an if statement checking to see if my PV dot is mine equals true. If this is true, then it means the current photon player object is owned by the local player. And so inside this if statement, I have my player avatar equals photon network dot instantiate. We're then passing in path dot combined with two strings. The first is our folder name inside resources, which is photon prefabs. And the second is the name of the prefab that we want to instantiate, which is au underscore player. That's all the first parameter for our instantiate function. 
The second parameter I've just put in vector3.0 for now, and the third parameter is quaternion.identity. Then for now, if we want, we could delete the update function and then save the script. We'll then go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we want to select our Photon Player Prefab and then drag our My Photon Player script onto this object in the inspector. This object should already have a photon view, so you don't have to worry about that. And the last thing that we need to do for this lesson is select our AU Player Prefab and we need to attach a photon view to this object because in order to instantiate an object across the network, that object has to have a photon view component. And so you can click the Add Component drop-down menu and search Photon View and select it. Finally, we can test out our project by going to our Quick Start scene and we can build our project. So I'm going to go to File, Build Settings. I then like to open up the player settings and go to Resolution and Presentation. We then want to change the full screen mode to Windowed and I'll set the width to 800 and the height to 600. We'll then click the build button and I've created a new folder inside our project file system called builds and we'll click select folder. Once it's finished building we'll go ahead and play our game in the standalone and the editor. I can then click play now and play now and here you can see we have two astronauts in our scene. I don't know why our standalone is squashing everything horizontally. Even the tables look like perfect circles now. But if I pause our editor and expand our game scene you can see that we have two photon player objects and two AU player objects. Now that's everything that we're going to cover in this lesson on how to instantiate our player's avatar across the network. In the next video we'll go over all the setup that we need to do for our player. Things like making sure we only have one active camera in our scene. So make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be notified when we publish that video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.